and uh, welcome everyone to our uh, second week uh, in Advent when we come together to discuss, to have a chat. As I said last week, it's a chat conversation actually about the this course, the Advent course, which was put together by the conference uh, for us to interact, uh, discussing on the main topic, there is room, there is room, there is room. So last week we met and we were talking about room for you. Uh, me and us all. And this week our topic is there is room for difference. There is room for difference. So in this uh, topic I'm going to to bring a, a number of things uh, to share with you and we will also be uh, sharing, having conversation, and there will be some readings in in this study. There will be also a film uh, that I will share, and we will watch that film. And also uh, the hymns that we will uh, also engage with. So. Welcome everyone. I just wanted to give this introduction uh, to this evening's study. Uh, there is room for difference. There is room for difference. And the nativity character in this study, in this evening's conversation, is wise men. Wise men is the nativity character. The wise men traveled a long way following a star to find the baby Jesus and worship him. They probably came from Persia, modern day Iran, and they were not Jewish like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. They were Magi, men who studied astrology. This was forbidden for Jews and for followers of Jesus. And yet, God chose to write a message in the stars to these Magi, and they responded to God's invitation. The Bethlehem stable has, has room for people for many religious and ethnic identities, even people who might not expect to find themselves there. So, have you ever felt like a religious or cultural outsider. As you reflect on this question, I'm going to share a hymn here. This is the hymn, Long Ago Prophets Knew. Long Ago Prophets Knew. I'm Well. 
Let me just admit somebody who has just knocked the door. There is room, there is room, there is room for everyone. Welcome. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome. There is still room, there is room for everyone. Now let me um, ask you, Samuel to give us the Isaiah reading. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot shall come from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he shall judge for the poor and decide with iniquity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the bed around his lungs. The wolf shall live with the lamp, the leper shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child will play over the whole of the apse, and the one child shall put his hand on the other's den. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. On, the, on that day, the root of J.C. shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the end of the reading. Thank you, Samuel. Now we can... Uh, hear the gospel reading uh, coming from Brenda. Yes. Uh, the second reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit that befits repentance. And do not presume to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, 
and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you uh, for the readings. I'm going to share a hymn here. Uh, oh, come, all ye faithful. Then uh, after that hymn, I will bring a video story uh, that was put together for this uh, week. again a story a video story and you get ready to have a conversation of what you have read and what will come from that uh, story Hi, I'm James, I'm the youth peasant for this year, and welcome to my church in Clifton. And today I'm going to be taking you through what neurodiversity is, and how churches can help people like me. I am a person who lives with multiple neurodiverse conditions, um, ADHD, autistic traits, and dyscalculia. Um, over my lifetime I've had uh, multiple problems um, in mathematics, I can add and subtract reasonably fine, um, but asked me to divide or times and I'm of no use to anyone. Um, in social situations I'm unable to read emotions or the meanings behind stuff. Um, there have also been positives however. Um, I've been found to be creative, a good problem solver 
and fantastic at literacy skills. Before we begin, it's important um, to explain what we mean by neurodiversity. Examples of neurodiverse conditions are Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, um, Autism, Dyslexia, Dyscalculia, Dyspraxia, Dysgraphia and Tourette's. There are multiple things churches can do to help people like me. And these are... Understand that our conditions and affect us and both negatively and positively in our everyday life our home life, our work life, and our church life, and accept us for who we are, and sometimes our conditions um, need a little help along the way, and to be able, and to be, and to be able to do some tasks. And so if you um, um, could put out um, equipment without us having to ask, um, such as acetate um, overlays for dyslexia, or yeah, doing shorter sermons or interactive sermons even, um, it, would, it, um, it would do a lot to help us um, to interact um, on a daily basis. <music> Statistics show um, that people with neurodiverse conditions are more likely um, to, be, it, um, to be the victim of bullying and, for, it, it, and what we need is a space for us to escape to and to be able to heal and, it, and, and rebuild. Um, at the end of the day, our conditions um, affect us all slightly differently, um, and, the, uh, 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 and we've spent our lifetimes um, build, uh, um, building up coping mechanisms to be, uh, 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 um, to be able to live with our conditions. Um, so the uh, 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 and so the best people who know how to support us is us. So don't be frightened to ask us for help. And these sorts of factors um, help us and they also help you. Helps us by creating um, an inclusive space where differences are celebrated and alterations are seen as a natural way of life. And helps you because we will be equipped um, to interact more and give a fresh insight into the life of the church. Thank you for listening today and we hope you found this information helpful and it will definitely help um, people like me. Welcome back. Yes, so that was the uh, the story, the video story in uh, connection with our topic for this evening, uh, which is uh, there is room for difference. There is room for difference. And if we connect that story with the readings for today, starting from uh, the Isaiah reading and also the Gospel reading. What is it that come into our minds? Can we share? Can we feel free to share our thoughts as to whether there is any connection here between uh, the topic, um, the readings and also the video story? Yeah, I just want to point out, you know, I was very touched by this video. Uh, yes, there is room for difference. Um, <clears throat> I've actually uh, observed this in the churches when, uh, you know, as I go along in the churches, we find that sometimes we find people who are one, they may be disabled. Um, they um they come to church and they want to be to, to be interactive with the others in church they want to feel like he's saying it he feels safe it's a safe place coming to church they might have other disabilities but what i've observed in in the, in in churches is that um we do not uh, accommodate sometimes we do not accommodate people who have got uh, disabilities like this one, uh, this young man, he has got autism and um, they have a lot of uh, abilities which they can do, which because we do not ask them, because we think because they are disabled, we, uh, we don't want to include them in whatever, in the running of the church. 
some of them are very good for th things like uh, arranging flowers, uh, arranging chairs, or even uh, in, the, in the choir, if they cannot do the physical things. There are quite a lot of things. And uh, also another thing that I've um, noticed, which has now changed a lot in the churches as years go by, there is, uh, uh, the, the, they've made the entrance accessible for wheelchairs. Though I still have to see some churches doing the same. They, um, you know, when when the disabled come, they need to be to be free to move their, you know, their wheelchairs. But sometimes they not included with that. You know, they, nothing is done, or uh, um, toilet. Um, uh, what do you call it? To toilets. You know, disabled toilet. Now it is coming up, but in in some years back. The, they were they were not even no toilets no arms or nothing to accommodate them so they were not included as part of the so i think it's very important that we include whoever is in uh, in our in our congregation if they've got a disability they ha they have something to give if we were to ask them we uh, like he says in this this young man he says ask us Mm. Because we don't ask them, we we think that you know we 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 are embarrassed. I think to ask, we think that because they are disabled, we you know we don't ask. Mm. So it's very important that we ask them, because they have got so many talents they can bring to church. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. That was Joyce uh, sharing uh, her thoughts. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Anybody who wants to say something? Um, good evening, everyone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah, praise God. I am able to speak today. And oh. God has given opportunity to join all of you this second, um, uh, second week of Advent. So, yeah. Um, I believe, uh, as our sister is talking about uh, the dis disabled people, and uh, the Lord has given us a wider, wider, you know, um, opportunity by coming in this world. Because if you remember, um, before he was um, ascending into heaven, he said that go in the world and beyond any race, religion, and uh, color, preach the gospel. And that was his promise, because when we remember Israel, Israelites didn't listen to him, they didn't believe him, then he asked the disciples to go in the wider world and spread the gospel. And today, when we see, uh, when we read the gospel, when we, uh, when we read that Isaiah scripture, that, um, Un uncommon things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, unusual things will be happening. And that what we are seeing, unusual things, what Lord want us to do to welcome everyone beyond race, religion, color in the church, in this community where we can, we can spread the gospel, not just by, um, by uh, preaching or teaching, by the way we live, by the lifestyle we have, by just get, offering them a cup of coffee. As our church has started, I really love that idea. Um, uh, the coffee evenings, which are started by uh, St. Andrew's Church, and I believe many other uh, Methodist churches are doing the same, that this is what Lord really wants us to. If there is any disability, if there is any difference of opinion, if there is any difference of color, difference of faith, everyone should be welcome because this was the whole purpose of Lord coming into this world and uh, sacrificing for us that he want to save the whole of the world, not just one area, not just Israelites. Today, all are the present Israelites. He mm. wants us, he's welcoming us, and he wants us also to spread this message to everyone in our own capacity, wherever we are, in the offices, even in the church, wherever we are, wherever at our workplaces, the as in gospel said that live, we should have a life like Christ. 
So mm -hmm. that should be spoken. It should be manifested through our attitude, through our speech, through the, our character, and then people they may follow us. And when it comes to church, mm -hmm. everyone should be welcome, and uh, we should not segregate people. Oh, this, and we should not be judgmental even that oh this person doesn't need the word how many times i tell them no this person doesn't need the word you never know when is the turning point in one's life we must not give up and share the love the christmas is just about love that uh, god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son so this is the true message that we can share and make room for everyone in our life in our homes and in the church Mm. Thank you. God bless. Yes, thank you, Akila. Thank you for sharing, uh, for such a powerful sharing. It's quite diverse. So I think we are beginning to see here the meaning of the uh, subject. Then I was also reminded that, uh, remember, we, 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 we talk of advent calendar which is coming with the different uh, themes and last week in 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 our first week the theme was the uh, hope and for your information you are reminded this week that the theme for this week is peace right peace meaning to say there is need for 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 us uh, to have peace with one another <laughs> peace with each other irregardless of differences but then i was thinking think of enemies people we may have enemies i, I was taken to the zoo to zoo to the zoo where uh, you know animals are kept and i discovered that sometimes you you discover that animals are kept you know not together you know because of their differences <laughs> there is there are other animals that can uh, go for other animals you know they if they see other animals it's meat to them <laughs> so if they are put together then sometimes there might be a, a a problem there or a challenge there that will there be peace will there be peace but i think this is what you know this uh, theme and this week and the stories are trying to bring to us to say okay there is a room okay there is a room anyway i'm just throwing and flashing you know giving this back to our readings as well because i was listening to isaiah also talking about the, the lion shall eat as as straw like the ox and a little child shall lead you know animals and things like that which might be impossible if we are looking at it anyway let's let, let's have others to come in to share your thoughts what have you sort of um uh, you know what are you uh, understanding here Let's share, let's, let's feel free to share the practicality of everything from the scripture and also the video story and the day-to-day -day situation. Thinking about what Joyce was saying about churches being sort of adapted and able to sort of invite people with disabilities to come in and, and share the space mm. i think churches have come a long way and part of that is because the law has changed and we are legally required to provide access for disabled people my my thoughts sort of thinking about joyce's comments and even akila's comment and looking at that isaiah reading which seems to be very much about um it talks about he will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear um you know as far as jesus the messiah who is coming he's not going to look at anybody and judge them because of what he is seeing you know it's what's in the heart that's important and i think it comes back to our individual responsibility 
to be aware of differences, mm. to be aware that people are different, not to make a big issue of them being different, but just to, to be very accepting. And we can only do that if we are perceptive, if we look around us and we, we are sort of understanding of the people who are coming into our premises, mm. of the people that we meet in the streets who maybe have got a, a disability. Mm. I think we're, mu we're much further along this path than we were 10 or 15 years ago. We've still got a long way to go. Mm. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. We still have a long way to go. And uh, I think it's important that all this is coming, you know, to us uh, to have these conversations actually. They, they help us, they help us, they help us to build on, yes, what we have already done and what we, we may also think of doing. Now, yes, any other thoughts? Yeah, I, will, I would like to say, take this from the piece that is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses six and seven. I think you briefly touch on that. Mm -hmm. Whereby all the wild animals, including the vulnerable and all this, were able to live together. Yes. But but at this time, we say the peace of the Lord allows us to look at uh, through others. Other way, we thought Jesus Himself. We attribute the Bible attributes uh, peace to Jesus Himself. Mm -hmm. But then, if you com uh, compare to this current the world we are living in. <laughs> if we're able to be able to um, forgo our differences mm. as the animals here in uh, Isaiah chapter six and seven, if you're able to forgo our differences, then the world will be a very peaceful place to live. Yes. You see, our differences. So because Jesus himself, is peace. Mm. It's peace. So it seems like uh, as humans, we have problems. We are the problems ourselves. You see, we thought we are powerful than others. We, we, we discriminate and all those. So that's why we are having this problem. Mm. But at this time of the year, whereby we are expecting the birth of Jesus, the peace himself coming into our life, I think we should give it a chance to live within us because uh, peace, as I said, the Lord allows us to look at others through heaven's eyes, mm -hmm. and it helps us to look through our to bring peace among ourselves. Other than that, if we don't forgo our differences, there won't be peace. Mm. Yes. So maybe. That will th thank you very much, Samuel. I think maybe that will lead us to acknowledge the fact that we are naturally the the we are living somehow. We are the same. We are human beings. We are all created in the image of God, but we are still enemies to ourselves. <laughs> That's true. Yes, we are still enemies to ourselves. And I was going to now bring, I have three questions for discussions and this, this will lead us to the first, and, uh, first, first question which is saying, uh, which people groups, which people groups uh, seem to be your natural enemies? <laughs> that is the question that was raised through this study, in this study, that we should talk about it. We should be frank. <laughs> Which people groups seem to be your natural enemies? Because we have been given already from the scriptures that uh, even animals, they are also grouped, isn't it? And animals which cannot play together. 
<laughs> but they are all called animals. And the Isaiah prophet has prophesied that when the Prince of Peace comes and he is welcomed, then those enemies shall start to relate and to work together. So let's add shift now. The question is asking us to shift from animals, right? We have seen animals, we know animals. If you go to the zoos, you know what I'm talking about. So let's come back to us as human beings and it's clear which people groups seem to be your natural, natural enemies. <laughs> I would say Christians yeah. ourselves. Because we are Christians and it seems like we don't live in peace. To me, if in terms of groups, then I would say Christians. We, we got a, yeah, my opinion, because it seems like we differ in a lot of ways. We are enemies uh, on our own. Yeah. I, would I would like to add <clears throat> that naturally we tend to gravitate towards people that we share a lot of common features with yes so it could be a common language it could be um common beliefs ideas ideals religion and so anybody who falls within that naturally we gravitate towards and those who fall outside of that uh, that sort of group we tend to sort of keep them in the margins until we get to identify certain things with them, certain com common grounds with them, before we bring them in towards towards ourselves. Right. So, you, so you, to okay. answer your question, then mm -hmm. natural enemy humans, we are our own natural enemies because of what we we use the differences. So somebody doesn't believe in God. Okay, that person cannot be my friend because they'll corrupt me. Somebody doesn't believe in a certain thing that I believe in or hold dear, I would keep them at arm's length, which is what we do as humans. All of us do that. Mm. Mm. And that's, yeah. So you, 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 thank you so much. May I, may I know who was contributing? It's Nancy. It's my name not showing. <laughs> Nancy, are you the one who is using Samsung? Yes. Okay, I better go in and change, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't if you don't mind, please do. <laughs> I will sort it out. Let me try. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Thank uh -huh. you for, 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 for that co co contribution. Yes. Uh, can I can I say something? Yes, please. I don't know. I was reading something some time ago when I talk of religion itself is op the opium of the masses. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like, uh, as Nancy said, I'm a Christian and a Muslim because we are we don't believe, believe uh, belong to the same set. Mm -hmm. we, there's always some conflict of, there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's something that I've been thinking about all along, and it seems like it creates a lot of confusion. Mm. You see, in terms of peace, because I don't belong to a setter, and that means that person is an enemy or something like that. So I don't know how that could be sorted out, but it's a problem. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So we are, we, we are, I think we are trying to identify here the groups that seem to be, you know, natural enemies. We and we have identified the us <laughs> ourselves, you know, in that category. Anybody who wants to share share something before I I ask another question next as to that one. Okay, so having uh, said that, then who are your, who are you, who are you an enemy, sort of, 
who is your enemy, sort of? That's the question. Who can you identify as your? <laughs> if we have, if we know, the, we have come up with natural group. <laughs> You wanted to say something, Samuel? <laughs> we are our own enemies. We are, we are our own enemies. <laughs> <laughs> right. Others, others, why, why, what can we say? Do we have uh, others we may identify as our uh, enemies to say? I think we, we we somehow somebody has made it clear that if we if I have somebody I differ with, right? If I have somebody I differ with, then automatically he or she can be my enemy. Maybe because we don't believe in the same thing yeah. in some way, so we are afraid even to relate well, even to stay closer to each other. <laughs> there is no trust, isn't it? Yeah. Somehow, like we talk of animals, you know, like the animals we, we identified, listed by, with, uh, through Isaiah, that naturally, if, uh, 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 you know, this animal is put together with this one, there is a fight. <laughs> naturally okay maybe uh, another question is which people groups might feel unwanted in the christian church which people groups might feel unwanted in the christian church Um, uh, Pastor, can you please clarify, like by the church, which group of people are unwanted in the church? In the Christian church. By the church. Yes. By the church. The oh. Christian church, yes. So in other words, the, the question is trying to, 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 to say a Christian church maybe as Christianity as a religion. I think this is where the question is coming to say which people groups might feel unwanted in the Christian church. Is that clear now, Akila? I think there will be some, in some churches, people of um, same sex marriages might feel unwelcome right that's 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 a group of people in the christian church they may feel unwelcomed and and young people there is a group of young people right uh, the way they um, because I, I have heard some very true stories about them they just left the church while there was a sermon because they felt like that it is a direct attack upon if they are wearing ripped jeans or upon their outer appearance. So it is becoming difficult for young people. They feel like uh, that their presence, they are unwanted uh, in the church. Right. Young people, young people may feel unwanted or unwelcomed in the church because of their interests may be different to us as adults. <laughs> Yes. Okay, I get that. Any other thoughts? Uh, it could be some people um, who have got antisocial behaviors, you know, who are known uh, to have antisocial behaviors. Uh, I remember once there was uh, this um, um, gentleman who was known, very well known around the area and um, for um, coming in the church and um, uh, will uh, take something that doesn't belong to him or even go into people's um, 
uh, handbags is they, they go to uh, get that was before well before COVID, mm -hmm. he'll go through their handbags and pin you know, steal things. So in a way, he was not wanted because they, we were always uh, um, made aware that oh, he's around. Be careful. He, he he's in. He might be occupying a corner of the you know church, you know the, the bench at the, the back, and. Um, everyone would be so much aware that he's in and uh, we all knew that he, he he might do some things you know uh, so that's a group of um, which i think you know uh, which not very welcome all right all right all right because of antisocial behavior yeah, yeah yeah okay all right all right so yeah so it's good that as as anybody wants to to still to to contribute something in terms of these uh, groups identify another group i think as um the beginning the story that we heard it could be the people with disability yeah, dis disability or disabled they might feel unwanted because obviously they have a disability and we probably want to include them in things that we do, as they say, ask, and mm. we don't ask. So maybe um, people with disability or something. Oh, okay, okay, that's Deborah. Yes, <laughs> it is. Oh yes, thank you very I much. I eventually got the microphone to work. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution. Can uh, uh, I say something at last? I got in, got in at last. Is that um, is that John? Well, some yeah, people yeah. Some, some people seem to monopolise the conversation and go on forever and ever and ever and ever. But uh, uh, the question uh, is basically fairly simple, isn't it? There's the there's the historic creeds, and uh, we are uh, 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 the mem those who wish to be called in the Christian Church accept the historic creeds, mm -hmm. and that's that, that's a, a starting point to to work from. Right, 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 right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you John, for your contribution. Yes. Anybody wants to share something along those lines? Okay, let me bring the the last question now. Uh, the last question to share is what would it take for us all to live in harmony? To be accommodating. We have to be accommodating? Yeah. Okay. How can we do that? Um, any, any, any examples? Because sometimes it's easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, we should accept people as they are. We shouldn't discriminate. We should accept people. Right. We try to be open with everyone. Yes, living with differences to say there is room for differences. Um, can I bring uh, this story which you may be very much familiar? I've always said this, uh, that uh, I think the church, uh, we should, uh, if we want to run church, we should do it the Jesus way. The Jesus way is very simple and straightforward we need to if i take you to the story of uh, the woman who was caught committing adultery do we know the story yeah. yes you know the story that it was clearly written somewhere in the laws and somewhere that uh, this is not acceptable. And the people who brought the woman to Jesus 
where the where priests like me were elders of the church <laughs> like us who said we have caught this woman doing this and it is written there was a justification isn't it <laughs> that it is written but Jesus what Jesus did was hang on there stop there uh, I just want you to look into yourselves just to check your records. <laughs> <laughs> check your records individually, right? I'm not stopping you from stoning the woman, but I'm saying check your records first to check whether you are clean, right? And if you are 100% clean, then you take the stone and stone the woman. Then Jesus went on to write on the floor, writing on the soil, on the sand, giving them time. By the time he looked up, there was no one. <laughs> Everybody had, had gone, had disappeared. So why was Jesus uh, helping these people? Can we say he was exonerating sin or he was uh, encouraging sin or whatever? No, sin is sin, but it is uh, even if how we want to help one another, what matters, right? We help each other with love. Jesus was trying to create room for the woman, room to recover, room to know herself better, room to know even her mistakes on her own. So he created the space for the woman. So to me, Jesus was saying there is room here, right? Even for you as a woman. So we are quick to be judgmental, to close the space for others, because even the people we may judge and think they are wrong, they are like this, by coming, they know that they are coming to a space where they can learn, where they can grow, and we can learn together and we can grow together. That's the purpose for them. But if we put them off quickly because by seeing them by with our naked eyes and judge them quickly that's what Jesus discouraged and Jesus did not condone the woman's sin he said go and sin no more <laughs> so what Jesus was doing was creating space for people to grow together and to learn from one another and we only learn from Jesus not from one another in the sense like my character or whatever but we learn from Jesus who is the true character which is why he stopped those people of the law those priests of the law to stay, to say you can't be quick to condemn so I think this is something that we can also learn to say there is room for difference. We can be different today, but we can learn, you know, from each other that this is wrong. This does not bring peace to others. This brings hurt to others. We learn, but room should be created. Then we live in peace. That's what I thought I would have to say. Anyway, let me conclude by sharing what the sister has put together as good news to get across. Good news to get across. It says, the story of God holds together all people. The story of God holds together all people all the world and even those of us who feel different the story holds us 
together. We believe that God created all things and therefore is a God of diversity and creativity. In God's vision of the world, all things exist in love, harmony, and peace. And the good news is that we are all asked to take our place in that vision. Let us all take our place in God's vision. Then if we do that, I think we will be able to live in peace. That's all I can say according to this week's study. So let us take action from here to try and go and practice, put into practice what we have discussed, what we have shared. Look into our churches, church stewards. Let us see whether our buildings are accommodative, are also catering for differences so that when people come, they feel they are welcomed. The way we talk to people, let us make sure we create an environment which is inviting even to discussion, to a topic that can be show difference among ourselves. It should be communicated in love. That's what Jesus demonstrated to us all, and that's why he is coming to us. So, anybody with a question or uh, any comment before we uh, share the song uh, to close our today's study? Okay, thank you for joining us. I thought I would share uh, the hymn uh, before we share grace with one another. I could also share joy to the world, the Lord is come.
Yes, can I invite you all to unmute yourselves so that we share the grace together and say goodbye together. Yes, please do unmute yourself. I want to hear your voices. There is room for different voices. <laughs> <laughs> there is room for different voices. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Ah, good to see your face, to see you, Akila, there. Ah. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit ill face, but I said, no, at the point of grace, okay, let's turn on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Good to see you. We thank God that you, you are able to join us. So we thank God for healing. Yes, thank you so much. Right, let us see... Um, Share grace together. Let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ and the the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. Of the Holy Spirit be forevermore. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Good night, Good everyone. Night. See you Good. again next time. Bye. Thank you, everyone. We we'll see you bye. next God bless week. You all. Bye bye. Yes, next week. Don't forget. Bye bye. Yeah.